This is a demonstration of the kerosene technique using the chimney. Uh, this particular chimney is uh, titanium. My earlier experiments with the use of a chimney were done with a simple cutout uh, from a uh, coke type aluminum can. This is suitable for uh, use for things like gasoline or Coleman fuel for those types of stoves that use that. But for kerosene, the temperatures are much, much higher and it literally will melt the can. So I've used titanium. This is titanium foil. It's 0 0.005 inches, 5 thousandths of an inch, and it is uh, 0 0.125 millimeters thick. This is fairly thick type foil. You can buy foils that are thinner than this. I think there's some that are about a fourth as thick as this, but they cost almost as much. This one was approximately 12 inches by 36 inch foil sheet that I got for about $55, including shipping. This particular piece was made from a cutout from that foil that was approximately 22 or 23 centimeters by about 13 centimeters. Anyway, the, um, this is an experimental design where I actually have leaves that are at the top part of this thing. Um, I found out later that this actually doesn't work that well for the, uh, for the gas type uh, chimney. And this is actually too high for the uh, Primus multi-fuel uh, stove. It should be shorter. This was originally for the Brunt and Bantam type stove, which is a uh, primarily a gasoline uh, Coleman fuel type uh, stove. Now you'll notice that this thing has got cutouts, which is similar to the Bantam stove. It's got three legs on it. This has got three legs. Again, this is much taller than it's supposed to be for this particular stove, but as as an indic as a illustration, it works fine uh, for this particular application. Now, kerosene is an entirely different um, petroleum product compared to things like Coleman fuel or white gas or whatever. Um, the boiling point is about two to three times higher, but the properties are significantly different that are apparently unrelated to just the boiling point alone. Um, it is an oil. Basically, this is um, the equivalent of uh, fuel oil. And um, like used in furnaces uh, in some places such as the north. Uh, anyway, uh, this doesn't follow the same startup routine as I use for um, white gas type applications. This requires a much higher starting heat and a more aggressive uh, startup routine. The bottle pressure, for instance, is much, much higher than is typically uh, the case for my starting up with the white gas stoves. Typically on, this, on the white gas, I start off with uh, very few pumps, very low pressure in the bottle, regardless of how much fluid is in the bottle. This one has got 50 pumps in it already. I've got a very small amount of uh, kerosene in the bottle, but uh, some of the websites that have done some, that have shown some research articles on the use of kerosene in stoves in some third world countries have also demonstrated the applicability of these types of stoves even for those type of areas for routine household use and um, they found that about 50 pumps is about enough to bring the pressure up to about 15 psi which is about what you need and you really need a much higher pressure than is the case again with uh, standard white gas I use what is called a 5 to 10 times rule for this over the white gas stoves. Um, it basically takes 5 to 10 times more pumps. It takes about 5 to 10 times more alcohol in order to get the thing started. It takes about 100 times more patience most of the time. Anyway, um, my initial uh, trials getting this thing started were terrible uh, without the chimney. Uh, with the chimney, there's still an iffy thing and I would still recommend keeping a close tab on the jet when you get ready to um, put the stove away for the day. 
it, it's easy to get this thing clogged up and I'll go over some of this as I move along uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put in about one half ounce of denatured alcohol initially I just used the alcohol uh, to soak the pad but I found that that doesn't really work so well so I now go ahead and just dump it directly into the bell and of course it will leak out and it goes into the priming pad that's below and I basically put enough in to make it definitely visibly uh, soaked on the bottom and again this is about one half ounce 15 cc's one tablespoon then I put the little chimney on it's a little breezy today Ah, there we are. Okay. Now, I'm going to use my stopwatch to keep track of this. For approximately one half cc of uh, alcohol, it takes about two minutes for this to burn out. While this is not at all obvious from the daylight um, appearance of this, at nighttime, this alcohol is hot enough to cause the titanium to glow red in some portions and it's actually hot enough to cause the flame spreader which is that top plate that's on the primus stove to glow red as well this is a good sign because it indicates that a lot of the heat is being retained which is primarily one of the uh, uses of having the chimney in the first place it it, it helps to retain the heat it also serves as a little minor degree of a wind break uh, or windscreen for the priming purposes. I'm coming up on about one minute uh, for the actual burn time. Now the another advantage of having the chimney is that it actually uh, contains which usually an initial um, uh, burst of yellow flame that comes from this as the kerosene begins to start taking hold and um, that uh, actually is a safety factor I also keep the chimney in place once this thing uh, gets going uh, so that it will retain heat to keep the burner as hot as possible until it equilibrates and when that happens it's pretty obvious now I'm going to try to start this up That one, the actually um, the alcohol had gone out and I couldn't see it. As you can see, that the chimney actually contains the yellow flame. One thing I will mention is it's extremely easy for these kerosene jets to clog off. If you have a startup routine that takes forever, your jet is probably getting clogged off and that's not a good sign. Now I can see that the plate is already getting pretty hot and again at night this titanium uh, chimney gets really red hot. Once it seems like things are going pretty well I will then remove the chimney and and now we have our pump going. It's been approximately three minutes from the time that I started uh, the alcohol to this stage, which I think is actually uh, pretty good. Now one of the things that I will do uh, after this is over, this is the third trial that I've done this morning. This is the first one that I videoed. And I will check the jet. I would think at this point the jet is probably a little clogged off because typically it has a, uh, I think, a, a somewhat more prominent flame. Usually, as the, as the jet begins to narrow because of deposits, 
the flame is less obvious because it's becoming a bit leaner. And uh, because the orifice size is obviously getting smaller as a result of the uh, clogging of the thing. Um, so this, it's a kind of an indicator, a rough indicator of where your jet is. There's another rough indicator of how your jet is doing from the standpoint of um, getting clogged up, and that is the shutdown routine. So we, let's say we have finished what we're going to be doing using the stove for. The routine I have for shutting these stoves down is not just to change the position of the bottle, which is characteristic, but I also elevate the fuel line. The reason I do that and also elevate the tail end of the bottle to make sure that there's actually no potential for the pickup tube to get any liquid, even if the bottle is nearly full. The reason for having the uh, bottle elevated is to make sure that all the fluid goes down to the line. You want it as dry as possible. Um, now, as I mentioned before, the, there's a secondary indication of how your jet is doing because on the shutdown routine, ideally, you should have a rapid transition to what appears to be normal operation like this is to a, just a quick hiss. There will be a, a transition between the full flame to the hiss uh, and it, um, it should be, again, very rapid. If there's a much more prolonged shutdown sequence, it takes a real long time for the uh, fuel to, to run through the line. That also is an indication that the orifice size is really small. Now, you, you can hear that it's getting close to where the where this rapid transition is. And as soon as it starts hissing, okay, there's the rapid. And now it's out, all I hear is hissing. You want to shut the valve off immediately at that point because I found that there's some residual vapor that's in the line and it actually will cause deposits to, uh, uh, to form. You can see a little bit of smoke, which is residual kerosene in the line. So I do not recommend, unlike the, uh, the white gas stoves, where I actually let it bleed off quite a lot, uh, for these, for the kerosene applications, I tend not to do that. I tend to let the, uh, the stove flame out and then I immediately shut the valve. Well, that I think is the conclusion of this particular demonstration.